we finally made it back into the ocean. It's a pretty nice day. It's a little breezy, but uh, it's coming off the land, so hopefully we don't take too much of a beating. So we're gonna see what's up on the local uh, structures. Uh, this time of year, well, I got 53 degree water, so it's definitely dropped since my last time out. Uh, I'm wearing the heavy dry suit because it is kind of cold out. Uh, so let's see what ends up fighting. Pretty sure there's a mixture of albies and bluefin under these birds. Saw a couple of huge busts. Had a hard time getting back on them. All right, well, getting up to our first spot now. We chased some bluefin tuna around. <laughs> you know, one of those things that was wild goose chase. So, what are you thinking, Elias? I'm beat, man. Just want to sit and drop jigs to the bottom and chill out. Way too fast. I had no shot. They came up quick. Looked like albies and bluefin together. Couldn't tell. But uh, we're going to start doing a little jiggy now. <laughs> Get out of pipe dream mode and back to reality. All right, so uh, did a pass with the jigs, not a tap. So that makes, you know, rules out stuff like weak fish, um, possibly black drum and black sea bass from this spot. So we got to make our next move, which is a uh, crab and a uh, bottom sweeper. And on this presentation, maybe with a little bit of luck, we'll get a tog or sheep. Oh, gosh, no good, no good, no bueno. Ring tails and small sea bass. Winter fishing in North Carolina. Got him. Something good there. On the crab. Tog, I guess. Just re kind of repositioning myself. Not a bad one. First tog for the outing. These are my favorite eating fish, toad tog. Uh, here in North Carolina, you're probably gonna have to bust ass to start finding some fish over 20 inches. Majority of them tend to be, I don't know, ones I've caught inshore, 16 to 20 inches. So I think what I get, you know? But we're gonna get a couple of these. They're crab eaters primarily. You can catch them on shrimp and other stuff, but it's tough to do that, so. Crabs are a good way to get them. Okay. These mud crabs, man, they're hard to get this time of year. You really need a moon tide to really get them because uh, they usually bury pretty deep in the, the mud because it's cold out. And to get them, you gotta work for them a little bit, that's for sure. Making a little move here. Just one toe tog down that way, which ain't bad. One is more than none. Let's see what we can get here. Got a good hit here. Good hit. What was that? Oh, jolt head. Porgy time. It's a jolt head porgy. White boner. I call them jolt heads, but yeah, that's what this guy is. Nothing makes tacos like these guys. Seems like we could find a couple here and there. I think that wind's coming back to haunt me right now. That's kind of what I'm getting out of this all right now. All right, unfortunately, this wind has kicked back up. Um, that means you have to head back in short. Uh, I don't want to mess with it. Uh, blowing pretty good northwest. I'd say about an hour fishing tops, you know, feeling the bite out, cold water. Got to get them going, etc. So, not the best. Not what I'm after. So, we'll see. Maybe we can get back out here in a day or two. Let's try again. So, actually, usually I dump this kind of day. I dump the footage because two fish, uh, pretty slow fishing, terrible conditions. I didn't get a whole lot to show you. But I figure, in the spirit of what I've done and something we haven't done in a little bit, we'll do a little catch and cook uh, up in the old kitchen. Uh, the reason I decided to do this. Uh, this is the last one you'll see in this location. I'm moving next week, so you might not see an upload for a while. I'll try to take a look. If I get a really solid weather window, maybe I'll still try to do my absolute best, but no guarantees things come up when you're moving. I'm still staying in the Wilmington area, but uh, we're leaving this place two years, and I just also wanted to give a little reflection as a thank you. Uh, we've been here for two years, so thanks to all new viewers, old viewers, uh, Old subscribers, new subscribers, old customers, new customers, tackle shops, 
uh, Patreon supporters, both present and past, thank you all. A lot of work goes into what I do, uh, both physically from my end and behind the scenes, of course, too. So, uh, <laughs> the porgy. Uh, fitting in to the, the last one we'll see in this kitchen. We got an air fryer for Christmas So I said let's give this uh, let me show you what I, I concocted this one day out of just goofing around with the air fryer I absolutely love this thing. So uh, This is one fish dish. I thought was kind of cool. It's a junk food dish, but um, it's not as bad because it's not deep frying it in oil. All right, meet the porgy. Uh, this is a jolt head porgy 99% sure that's what this porgy is uh, the ones I've caught inshore within my range, I'd say uh, up to 18 inches, underrated as hell fish. Uh, I think they are better than sheep's head, I think they're better than speckled trout, flounder, redfish, black drum. Uh, they don't have the same uh, flesh like a lot of the other porgy family. Uh, scup is kind of grayer, ringtails are kind of grayer. When we fillet it, you'll see it's like bone white flesh, awesome fried, all these other dishes. Um, definitely an underrated fish that even over here I see them in the fish markets pretty darn cheap compared to some of their compadres. Unfortunately for me, the kayak angler, it's kind of a bycatch fishery. Uh, they don't seem to group up within my kayak range, that one to three mile range. Catch maybe, I'd say a catch like six a year tops, so not too many, but man, they are good stuff. So let's clean them up and that helps. We'll goof around with the air fryer. I'll show you what I got. All right, question for you uh, more sharp anglers. What is the northernmost range of this fish? Hatteras? Uh, do they make it up to Maryland and South Jersey? Oh, that I'm really not too sure about. But just let's think for a minute of all the memories we have from this kitchen. Ah, uh, yes, the lizard fish catch and cook. Ribbon fish. Think of almost no bloodline. This fish truly is a winner. And they got a set of teeth. Kind of like sheep's head, I would say. Not as like vicious looking as a sheep's head, but definitely a set of chompers. Uh, pretty cool fish, man. Uh, definitely in that underrated class. Uh, they would fry well whole too, but uh, we're gonna do this one. We're gonna do this one a little differently. Good stuff though. Okay, so this is a fairly simple recipe. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the healthiest, but it's not the most unhealthy. Uh, you're gonna want your fish, flour, I'm using panko breadcrumbs, uh, one egg, some cheese of choice, uh, that kind of makes it. I'm using Gouda and whatever other spices you want. I just put a little salt on the fish so far uh, and I'm gonna add some jalapenos. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna lay out our fish and we're gonna layer up a, little, a couple of these guys. I don't know. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is you wanna roll up your fish into like a little cartwheel, right? It might not be perfect, right? And then we're gonna do the second one here. So it's kind of like stuffed up pretty good. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna throw these skewers into it so it kind of secures it. Next year they're gonna want to break off the the ends of the wood, right? That's all I had near me. The old bolt, bolt cutter. All right, next we're gonna roll this up in some flour. Okay, flour. Next give it the egg wash. This one went a little messier than the white perch. I did the white perch uh, from that other video. And that was a lot cleaner. Um, I just obviously just didn't prepare my workstation. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna just roll up, make sure we get all our edges and sides and some panko. Just hit it up with a little olive oil. I'm gonna give this about eight minutes in this, right? I'd say eight minutes. Don't look like much. Didn't look like much going in, but let me show you what this end product is. All right, so. You can take the skewers out. Oh, that's the burnt one. I'm gonna be careful. The one I broke is I'm a Guggen. I'll take these out though. What you get here is like this cheesy, delicious fish goodness. There it is. Turning your fish into a jalapeno bobber. Gouda cheese is great. It's because it doesn't like blow up and leak everywhere. That's an awesome way to prepare a milder fish. Uh, these jolt heads are bomb. It's just like a, reminds me of mangrove snapper, black sea bass, etc. A little bit of cheese, that crisp from the panko, you're good to go. The presentation this time wasn't very good, I know, but um, if you, you really construct it into something, you can have a little bit of a work of art. Um, all right, let me get going. Slow day of fishing, made the most of it. Hopefully we can get a little better weather window. I, I call it quits this time of year. If it's something feels off out there, uh, being that it's winter, 
yeah, I pull, pull the plug, man. I just don't take that chance this time of year. Weather forecasts in the winter just get so much more questionable. That I remember this day I looked at three models, two gave me a great forecast and one gave me the dump. And the wind backed off for like an hour and a half that I can make my way out and fish a couple pieces and just cranked right back up to 10 to 15 instantly. So that doesn't surprise me. Um, so I don't want to be out there after dark or anything like that. Imagine getting stuck out there. Imagine getting stuck out there this time of year. That would really suck. So uh, anyway, let me get going. I hope you enjoyed. It's your old Ted Porgy.